Okay, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use ADT or Autodoc tools to prepare your files to dock with Autodoc 4.2.6. Here we go. Welcome everybody. I'm again back on Windows 10 to install Autodoc. MGL tools, it's part of the docking suite to use Autodoc and it's a graphical interface to prepare files. First of all, let me erase some of the files I prepared earlier and all you need to have going into ADT, into Autodoc tools, is a PDB file for your ligand, a PDB file for your receptor. That's about it. So I'm going to show you how to install it. As any program in Windows, you need to double click, uh, give permissions and make sure you know where it's installed. For example, this one is going to be turned into program files x86 MGL tools. The installation shouldn't be long. And it's going to leave you with a graphical interface. Now, docking in Windows, it's something that I don't do often. It may work or it may not work, but I'm going to just uh, install the program to prepare the files. After that, you can send them to any Linux computer or a cluster and have your calculations done. OK, I'm going to launch PMB, which is the interface. It runs from Python. And here we go. By default, the, that is the first time it's launched, it's like this, but you have to select these tools, Autodoc tools. And that is gonna open these menus. In these menus, now you have how a way to prepare your ligand, to prepare the grid and to prepare the docking. Those are the three steps. First, input open. We are going to tell the program where our ligand is. Mine is here as a PDB and it's PLM. In this program, we get to we get the program to read the type of molecule and it immediately knows that it's a molecule that has 14 rotable bonds and that uh, you are going to have all of them this uh, your disposition at your disposal to be rotated. We can change that later, right? But this is one of the steps of the preparation. Second step is identify the torsion tree. Unless you know what you want to assign, I, sh I usually recommend to detect. And this is where the rotations are going to happen. E and then you can choose the number of torsions, which means edit the file so that some of these uh, bonds do not change. I'm going to leave them as they are. And also decide if I want the rotations on these bonds to happen with the fewest atoms uh, moving or the most. I usually choose the most and, and I'm going to set that here. And finally, we save the ligand as PDBQT. I'm going to put it in the same folder so that everything is together. There we go. Now I'm going to leave this, this molecule here and I'm going to open now on file read molecule the receptor which is a PDB file. This PDB file as a receptor requires a few more steps. First, in edit, we need to add hydrogens. Usually the defaults are fine. Okay, next step, we're gonna add gas taker charges. Usually these programs uh, are, have a little bit of trouble and the charges are not exactly uh, uh, round numbers. But we can fix that here with charges, check totals on residues, and spread the charge deficit. As you can see, the charge changed, and the deficit is spread around these two residues. And after that, we can dismiss that, and then merge the nonpolar hydrogens. This is almost ready. We need now to go to grid. Under macromolecule, we that we select choose because the macromolecule is already open. We select one GXA. Aha, uh -huh, this is good. And we are going to save it as a PDVQT. 
So now we have prepared our receptor and our ligands. We need to prepare the grid. We do that by choosing the ligand, our PLM, and then grid box. This grid box in this instance is fairly easy to select because we can see the ligand there as a reference and we pretty much need to increase this to about 60. I'm going to increase it to about 60 in all dimensions, X, Y and Z. There. Ooh, there. Actually, it doesn't fit very well now that I see that. I'm going to increase it to 80 on the X axis. I mean, I can do this because I know that that the ligand is going to fit there. So you got to be careful when you select this uh, on your own here. Maybe it could be shorter on this dimension, but I'm going to keep it as it is. I'm going to close saving. And finally, I'm going to save the GPF file. This GPF file is something that we still need to process the files for docking gpf which is a, its grid something file so we we are one step closer to docking but not yet there now i need to create the docking file the dpf we select our macromolecule from the pdbqt that we have saved we select the ligand choosing because it's already open here this is perfectly fine. We need to select the, para the search parameters in genetic algorithm. These are basic search parameters. I would recommend 100 and 2.5 millions in, in number of evaluations and save this as genetic algorithm uh, DPF with the name of the receptor. Mm -hmm. Now, we just prepare files for docking. I'm going to quit the interface and the next step may not work, but I'm going to try them anywhere. Anyway, I have here my files, GPF, DPF, which are the ones I'm going to feed the program, autodoc and autogrid. And the other files are going to also be read, but they don't have to be described or, or given in the input. I'm going to open a terminal, the PowerShell. Here we go. I'm going to first got to try to tell it where the software is. No. Oof, Windows, such a pain. No, uh, no, 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 no. I think it's in auto. No, okay. No, I don't know where things are, so I'm going to open another window and use it. I apologize if this just makes things difficult for everybody. First, I'm going to go into desktop and into 1GX, GXA. I think that's easy. Then. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, not bad. Not bad. Okay. We have the executable. Now I'm going to drag the files. Oh, yeah. I'm going to give enter. Yes. That helps us. We need the minus P, which is going to be the GPF first. We need to process that. And minus L. And I'm going to use the same name. But I gotta make sure that I change this to GLG. Now I think this is gonna work. I'm gonna press enter. I don't see what's going on, but I think, yes, these maps have been created. This is part of the docking process. And the, this command line is gonna be busy. Yeah, it's done until everything is done. Now, we have to repeat something similar, but I'm going to change the files to the DPF, which is the docking, 
I need to change the program from auto grid to auto dock. And of course, my log file has to be DLG. If I don't change these names first, the program is not going to be useful because Autogrid only reads the GPF files and Autodoc reads the DPF files. The log is what the results are going to be. So if I don't change these names, I'm going to overwrite the previous results and nothing is going to work. So I'm going to I'm going to add an ampersand here and press enter. Oh, OK, I'm going to remove the ampersand. Mm, OK, for whatever reason, the ampersand doesn't work in Windows, but the docking is running. And here are going to be the results. I'm going to check my task manager. And yeah, Autodoc is running using a full CPU on my computer. So I call this a success. Uh, the results are going to be safe around here since I cannot. I don't know how to track the progress in the G DLG file on Windows. Well, I have to leave you here, but uh, I will call this a success in preparing files with ADT under Windows and then running the docking under Windows using the PowerShell. Uh, ADT is supposed to have a facility to do this, but I tried it and it didn't work for me. But this seemingly works. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like below, subscribe. I'm really close to a thousand subscribers so please make it let's make it so this year uh, pass it on to anybody that may need it and may like it post your questions see you around <laughs> how much fallo desde el principio how much will a otra vez how much good would a good shock shock if a good shock good shock good ahí está